Hello, and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. My name is Tim Smith, and our guest today is Fabia Teteru Bueno. Fabia serves as Chief Executive Officer for Philips Latin America and has recently completed 23 years of an active professional global career at Philips, where she has held several senior positions in general management, sales, and marketing. Her background is a mix of B2C and B2B and B2G in various businesses of Philips, healthcare, personal health, lighting, and television, both in the Netherlands and China, Germany, and the Philippines, and for the last four years in Latin America. Before this current role, she was business marketing sales leader for personal health in Latin America, where she promoted different initiatives to enable healthier lives with connected propositions focused on healthy routines and home care with strong results across the region. Born in Brazil, she's a big fan and promoter of Philip's goal to make the world healthier and more sustainable by innovation. When summarizing her management style, she describes it as purpose-driven and performance-led. Fabia holds a degree in foreign trade from Sao Paulo Methodist University. Fabia, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Tim. How are you? Very glad to be here with you. Well, we appreciate uh, your time so much, and I'm so excited about our discussion. Yeah, me too, me too. (laughs) Well, thanks again for your time, and thanks for speaking us uh, speaking to us from Panama. So let's start with you. Uh, tell us a little more about yourself. And you know, it appears from your background that the majority of your career has been involved in international business. And so you have to tell us too what prompted you to pursue a global career. Yeah, um, I, I'm Brazilian, and uh, 25, no, 27 years ago, when I decided to go to university, I had many ideas, but uh, my dream was to see the world. So I decided to uh, study uh, international businesses back then. And then uh, I, after four years of uh, university in the fifth year, we had to, um, uh, we had to go to trainship programs. And I had the lucky to to join Philips back then, 23 years ago, long ago in Brazil. Great. that was because Philips is a company that really gives you opportunities to yeah, see the world and grow and develop. So in this 23 years, I've been, in, uh, been living in uh, seven countries, six countries, Brazil, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, China, Philippines, uh, and now Panama, six countries. Wonderful. So, uh, in different roles. So I uh, grew uh, into uh, international marketing and uh, in the last uh, 12 years general management. So uh, I've been uh, growing the company with the company around the world. So um, yeah, let's say that I'm realizing my dream from when I was in my early 20s. (laughs) That's fantastic. Uh, We all want to have our dreams realized, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I had read that Philip speaks of believing there's always a way to make life better. How is COVID-19 impacting your company's ability to do business in Latin America? And what are you learning from this ongoing global pandemic? Well, uh, our mission is really to improve people's lives. So we basically say we are an innovation company and improve people's lives is our, uh, in our DNA. So we started with, has a very big conglomerate with lighting and then we went to electronics and then we went to healthcare. In the past 100 years, these were the main businesses that we had. But in the last 15, we have more and more going into health. So we want to use our power uh, of innovation to really improve people's lives with our innovations. And it's all around health. Uh, And then talking about COVID, uh, I think that uh, we saw the healthcare sector uh, uh, going through a transformation, like us, going through a transformation in the last 15 years. And I think COVID is just going to speed things up. Hmm. If I think for Latin America, um, our consumers, because we have a consumer business and we have a a, a business-to-business business, right? If I see our consumers more than ever are getting engaged with their health. So you want to take your health in your hands. So, for example, we have solutions for moms 
that they can track their whole pregnancy. So more and more, the consumer is taking care of their health of prevention. So we see this with COVID being speeded up. More than, more than ever, you want to be owning your health, right? So this is one of the areas that I think that COVID is going to speed up a lot, a lot of solutions for prevention and you taking care of your health more. Uh, something else that we already saw has a big trend globally and COVID is going to speed up in Latin America. Uh, Latin America is a, a region where there's a lot of tertiary care. So if you get sick, you go directly to emergency room uh, or you go directly to a specialist. And, and that is very unhealthy for the system because uh, imagine you taking care of taking space of uh, ICU or uh, emergency room instead of person that really needs. Uh, what we believe that we're gonna have to happen now more with COVID, people are getting afraid of going to an emergency room. So instead of going to emergency room all the time, so you're gonna prevent to avoid going there, but also you rather go to a clinic, to a primary care, that's the right thing to do because then you, you prevent instead of treating. So we believe that primary care is gonna grow a lot, but also home care, we're gonna grow a lot. Like in Europe, it's already like that. It's a much more balanced, um, uh, let's say, sector between prevention, diagnostic, treatment, and home care. In Latin America, it's very much diagnostic and treatment. I think we're going to go much more into primary care and home care, and COVID is speeding it up. And lastly, I think that uh, the, the, the sector is in need for uh, digitalization and informatics. Uh, if I see where I'm investing the most now is in these areas. Mm. So it's not about selling an equipment to do a treatment. Is about uh, population health man management and using uh, AI to really help improving the, the quality of life of people uh, to do better uh, diagnostic, to do better treatment. So we, be we believe that COVID, we're going to speed up the street trends that were already there before COVID, but COVID, we're going to speed them up. So the first, the consumer getting more empowered about their health, second, the the the, the, the healthcare sector be spread out more between treatment, uh, prevention, diagnostic treatment, and home care. And lastly, uh, more and more informatics, digitalization, connectivity in the sector. Excellent. I'm excited to see it realized. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back to global business for a moment. What about advice you would have for a young person wanting to pursue a career in global business, Fabia? What would you share with them? Well, I, I always think that uh, it sounds very exciting to be traveling all the time, but it's, it's not that, that easy, right? Now with COVID, I'm not traveling too much, but uh, I, I used to be every two weeks in a plane. So uh, until February, actually, I'm missing now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the key thing is, you need to know first personally what you want. In the beginning of the career, it's very fun, but uh, once you, you, you let's say, uh, marry, have kids, you also have to, to balance well what you want in your personal life. So I think that uh, professional and personal needs to be well balanced. I, I always tell this to people. On paper and uh, in theory, everything's nice, but in practice is different. So make sure that your professional and your personal are well balanced. I think this is first thing. Second thing is, uh, uh, I also think if you decide to have a partner, that you have a partner that supports you of this lifestyle, because if not, uh, it doesn't work. I saw many colleagues that wanted to live abroad and then the partner doesn't want, then it doesn't work. So if you have a partner, you have to consider that it's a family decision to have this lifestyle. It's not a personal decision only. And then looking to the professional side, I think that you really need to, to be critical on the assignments you get, because uh, I, I always had the opportunity to be 23 years in Brazil, but uh, I, I didn't want that. So I made strategic choices. Uh, I could have left Philips and uh, go do other things in Brazil, but I decided, no, I prefer to, to, to have an international career instead. So you need to be critical on the choices you make. Mainly in the beginning of your career, it's easy to go with the flow. I think that you need to be critical on the choices that lead you to your dream. And um, the last is be flexible. Career uh, and job titles change all the time. There are roles that didn't exist 23 years ago when I started working. And then now they're super hot, right? So I think you need to be flexible, continue, continue learning and adapting yourself to the to the, the world situation. So now for me, the, the most critical people is, are the ones that can work remotely. 
So most probably my international international career from now on, you're not going to be traveling all the time to visit countries, but to work whatever I want. I don't know, Costa Rica on, on the beach <laughs> because I can work remotely and travel instead for, for fun. So you need to be flexible and continuous, uh, continue with uh, a mindset of learning forever. You need to keep learning all the time. Great advice. Thank you, Fabia, so much. So congratulations on being named CEO of Latin America for Philips. Uh, I believe it was in March that you assumed the new role. Thank you. So I wanted to ask if you perceive an increasing number of women serving in executive roles. Yes, I think there are more and more. And I think companies uh, worldwide are investing more in um, diversity. Uh, I see a lot of startups and uh, new business with women also in the leadership. So I think we are getting more and more our space. Um, uh, I think still there's a lot to be done, a mm. lot to go, mainly Latin America, because the women in Latin America I see in my team, they are very much pressured for the family life uh, 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 in out of balance with the work life. So I, I leave it in, in Asia and I leave it in, uh, in Europe. And what you see, for example, in the Netherlands or in China or even in the Philippines is that uh, either both take care of the house and both work or both work and have uh, support at home. But it's not that both work and when come back home, the, the woman does everything. That's a little bit how it is in Latin America. And that's, I think, is one of the key things that hampers women of growing more. Because if you want to have a, a big career, you cannot get home and do 100% the, 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 the family responsibilities, right? So you hear a lot in Latin America, men say, yeah, I help my wife at home. And like, why? The home is not our, yours too? So it's like, not that you help, the house is from you both, right? So I think that... Uh, Yes, things are improving. If I compare with 23 years ago when I used to go to meetings and I was the only woman in a group of 20-something people, for sure it's much better. But I think that we only going to get a, a stronger breakthrough mainly in Latin America and for the rest depends on the country. But in Latin America, for sure, we're only going to get a bigger breakthrough when the balance between home and office is better between men and women. Today is still... I see a lot of very talented women in my team that I would love them to grow and grow faster. But yeah, they can't uh, cope with uh, managing everything, work and home 100%. So that hampers a lot of growth. So I think there's more than just companies uh, being more diverse and more open to diversity. There's a lot that companies still have to do. Mm -hmm. So it's still there's a lot that companies have to do, but there is still a lot of on the cultural, personal side that uh, we all have to do is to, to enable more balance. Thank you. You know, since you've spent 27 years at Philips? 23. 23, 23 pardon me. Obviously, Philips has sustained you well, and you have enjoyed a very fruitful career with the company. Um, and I'd love to hear you share the balance that Philips has allowed you to be a part of that they have contributed and you have contributed. It sounds like a very healthy relationship or you might not otherwise stay in it. Any thoughts to share with us today about why it's been a healthy fit for you at Philips? I think that uh, uh, every relationship is like that. Huh? When you feel that the, the win-win for both sides is good, it co continues to grow and flourish, right? I think in every relationship, friendships, uh, work relationship, um, rela uh, engagement, uh, any, any relationship is partnerships at work. It's always like that. If both sides are winning and growing, then uh, uh, it continues to grow, right? So I, I think that I had many opportunities to leave the company, but I never wanted because I always had opportunities to grow. I, I never did the same job for more than three years. And I always had an investment on my development. Uh, I always uh, was very vocal that I wanted to, to have an international career and I always got international jobs. 
And uh, um, talking about diversity, I feel that it's a very inclusive company. It's like if I want as a woman, I have this. I, I don't. I don't talk like I'm a woman in the room. I'm like I'm a professional in the room. So I'm treated as a professional. I feel not as a a woman or he's the guy and I'm the woman. I feel like I'm a professional. I'm treated as a professional. And uh, yes, in the last 23 years, I saw a lot of improvement and growth because it was normal certain things 20 years ago uh, that are not now anymore. But we can speak up. If we see things that are not good, we can speak up. If we feel that we are not being treated well, we can speak up. And a good example is when I moved to China, uh, my husband left his career in the Netherlands to follow me. But the norm is the opposite, right? So what happened was when we were moving there and because of a cultural thing, the, the whole communication was via email. And the person in the other side organizing my move was thinking she was talking to a guy. And uh, all the time she was talking, yeah, we're going to organize this to, this to your wife. We're going to organize this tea, tea sessions and uh, Chinese lessons. And at a certain moments, it's like, I don't have a wife. I have a husband. So you, you see the reaction is like, what? I said, uh, uh, yes. I'm a woman, uh, could be that I was a man with a husband, no problem, but I'm a woman and my, my husband is going with me. So what do you have for the man that goes with the woman? And at that time, the lady said, this was 12 years ago, and she's like, we never had that. I said, so you need to create a program also for men that go with women, right? And then yes. after that, and then not only that, they, they created a program that even for the woman that goes afterward uh, with the man, that they would have also in the beginning some support, not only for team, but also for <laughs> uh, finding a job uh, in China at that time. So, you know, uh, I think that this is a good thing of the company that, yeah, not everything is perfect, no, that nowhere is, but if you give feedback, diversity and uh, equal rights, you, you do have a follow-up and uh, they, they're gonna help you with that. So I think these are the key things that help me to stay in the company, keep growing, keep learning, keep getting opportunities, but also being treated as a professional, not as a, a woman. I, I, I like that very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Fabia, so much for speaking with us today and for sharing stories and encouraging us and uh, also helping um, our students and other students uh, consider a global career. And thank you for sharing your advice with them today. It, it means a lot. And on behalf of them, I want to thank you. Well, thank you so much also for inviting me. I think that uh, it is a, a, the job of every leader to prepare the next generation. So every time I get invited for this kind of discussions, uh, I, I really want to join, I really want to participate because we all have to prepare the workforce of the future and um, be it in a corporation like ours or be in their own businesses. Uh, you know, we need to keep the machine healthy and running with people that are happy doing what they do. And I think it's very critical that we as leaders uh, support this, this process of developing new talents for the future. So it's uh, not only for companies uh, critical, but it's a contribution to society. So I think that uh, I, I had a lot of this support when I was uh, young in my career. And uh, I, I really like to keep doing that for the, the generations that come after me. So it's a pleasure. You can guys can invite me all the time. And uh, I, I really appreciate and I wish you all that are watching this a, a lot of success in your personal and professional lives moving forward. Thank you, Fabia. And we will call on you again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be safe and be well. My best to you and your family. Yeah, you guys also be safe and uh, take care you all. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao. That's all the time we have for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please let us know at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu.